Uh, Mr. Smith, please proceed. Mr. Chairman, members of the subcommittee, uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here today. My name is Darren Smith. I'm the environmental manager for Devon Energy Corporation. Uh, Devon is a leading uh, independent oil and gas producer. Our operations are onshore, U.S. and Canada. Uh, our, our company's po portfolio of oil and gas properties uh, deliver stable and economically responsible production for the nation. Uh, we work hard at Devon Energy every day to, uh, to ensure that our operations are conducted in an environmentally responsible way. Uh, we aim to uh, protect the air, water, land, and the communities that we operate in. It's important to note that Devon does support uh, responsible regulations for our industry. However, we stand opposed to regulations that are unreasonable and regulations that are, that are grounded in unsound science. My testimony today will focus on the misperception that EPA has on uh, initial gas production from, from our industry, and I will describe how this misperception has resulted in a drastic overestimate of methane emissions from uh, hydraulically fractured wells. We know that this overestimate has already been used to justify new regulations, more stringent regulations for our industry, but, but probably more troubling is, is this overestimate is finding itself into policy research that, that time and time again is resulting in the wrong conclusions about natural gas and its value for this nation. It was when research from Cornell University published their uh, natural gas is dirtier than coal study that, that Devon first became aware of the fact that EPA had revised their emission estimate from hydraulically fractured wells. EPA now asserts, and, and I will add that has also reported to the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change that, that um, emissions from, from unconventional wells are in the neighborhood of 9 million standard cubic feet per well, and interestingly that those emissions have been taking place since 1990. When we looked into the basis of this emission uh, estimate change, we, we learned that EPA staff had relied on data reported to them from, from the Natural Gas Star Program uh, to create this new emission estimate, and that this Natural Gas Star data really only came from three companies. Um, that, that finding in itself probably describes the biggest flaw in EPA's method because very simply, the Natural Gas Star Program is for operators to report gas captured, not gas emitted. And in fact, the Natural Gas Star Program was never designed to report emissions from our industry. It was to report the gas that was captured from our industry. That's an important point. Devon, worked, Devon has worked hard over the last year or so to inform the EPA of this mistake and to provide them with the data that they could use to uh, make the change necessary to this emission estimate. We've met with them face-to-face -face with our own data. We've provided them data from a large group of independent operators such as Devon. We provided this data to them as part of the NSPS rule making docket. Uh, we have had emails. We have had telephone messages. We have uh, worked relentlessly to help the EPA uh, reverse their course and use actual data, proper data, and proper science in this rulemaking. We've also provided them reports from independent uh, researchers that uh, confirm our findings, and, and you'll be interesting to note that the Chamber of Commerce in the U.S. that represents over 3 million uh, businesses here in the U.S. also has been involved and has asked for a uh, request for change for this data based on the Data Quality Act. Despite all this, uh, EPA fails to acknowledge the mistake and, more importantly, fails to uh, make the change necessary. I'd like to turn to the graphic that I provided to you in, uh, in my testimony. I'm going to have to move very quickly. I just noticed my time. But, but essentially, this graphic, uh, if I can uh, thank you for, oh, that'd be great. Uh, the graphic essentially is uh, to describe kind of the error in an illustrated form. But uh, essentially, when a well is hydraulically fractured, it needs to flow back so that the gas can be produced from the well. Uh, flow back here on the left-hand side starts off uh, with very low gas volume as as, uh, as, as water is removed from the well, gas increases until it levels off here. E EPA's perception of flowback is in the magnitude of 10 days because that's what's reported to them under the gas, gas star <laughs> program. Uh, a 10-day flowback uh, results in 9 million standard cubic feet of gas released from a well. Now, if you contrast that with 
the uh, situation where gas capture is not possible using green completion. Uh, we have provided data to EPA that, from operators that suggest that flow back when gas capture is not possible is, uh, is only in the magnitude of three and a half days. So if you can, if you can compare the gas volume assumed from the gas, natural gas star program versus the gas that's released when, uh, when, when green completions aren't possible, you'll see that there's a stunning uh, discrepancy here. Uh, it's Devon's position that, that this, this factor needs to be changed. It needs to be changed now. Um, we've already seen that rules have been promulgated based on this bad science. And then our concern, again, is that uh, continued policy research is, is going in the wrong direction. We, we, we just recently have seen a study from our friends at EDF, Environmental Defense Fund, that, that suggests that gasoline vehicles uh, are actually cleaner than, na and than compressed natural gas vehicles. And the, and the foundation of this, uh, this, these research findings is, is, is rooted in, in these bad estimates and this bad science. And, and with that, uh, I'll conclude my testimony. Thank you.